Hello, and welcome to this video on how to use SQL Lite with R. I'm Neil Curry, I'm a freelance data professional and founder of Torch Data, a company helping people to improve their data and coding skills. If you find the video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. I also post data and coding threads weekly over on Twitter. My handle is at Neil G Curry if you want to follow me. The link to all the code used in this video is in the description. Today I'm going to show you how you can get started using SQL Lite in R. SQL Lite is a relational database management system. You can easily and quickly store data in a tabular database and control it from tools like R and Python. It's one of the most popular databases in the world, used in the background of popular applications, mobile phones, and computers. Why might you need to use them for analysis though? Well, if you use lots of different tabular datasets in your work, maybe CSV files or similar, combining them together into a single database can be much tidier. Another advantage is the ability to handle big data. When your data gets to a certain size, it becomes too big for your machine's memory. If you try to load it all at once, R will crash. With a database, that is fine. Large files can be saved to disk and queried without loading everything into memory at once. It's generally much faster to work with databases compared to more standard files like CSV if your data is larger. Another tool that is becoming very popular as a query database is DuckDB. This is even faster for querying in lots of scenarios than SQLite, but both are great tools with pros and cons to have in your toolbox. I'll cover that in a future video. A final advantage to point out is that SQLite doesn't require any other external dependencies. You just need to use install.packages within R to download, just like a regular package. This means one less piece of software to worry about maintaining, either for you or your IT department. Getting extra pieces of software can be a nightmare in some organisations. Anyway, let's head over to RStudio. The first thing I need to do is load some libraries that I'll use in this video. The first package, DBI, is used for working with databases. The R SQLite package is unsurprisingly for working with SQLite databases. dplyr is a package for manipulating data and is part of the Tidyverse suite of packages. Readr is also part of the Tidyverse and is used for reading data into R. The glue package is very handy for combining strings together. And finally, the here package is really useful for figuring out where the R is pointing at and constructing file paths from. This means the code should be portable when you come to run it. If you don't have any of these packages, you can download them using install.packages. I've already got them, so I'm just going to load them using library. The first thing I'm going to do is create a file name for the database. I'll do that using the glue and here packages, though you can do it without, I just find it handy. I'm going to call my database football-data.db. We'll download some football results data to populate our database with. You can see this has created the following path. Yours will almost certainly look different. Next, we're going to create a connection to our database using the dbconnect function from the dbi package. The first argument we will supply is actually another function, SQLite, from the rsqlite package. The second argument is the file name. If I run that, you will see in the file explorer pane, it's created our database. This is because the database didn't exist. If it did exist, it would have just connected to it. So it tries to connect to the specified database, and if it doesn't exist, it creates one. But this database is empty because we haven't added any tables to it yet. We can check that with another function from the DBI package, dblistTables. If we run that, we get an empty character object. Basically, there are no tables in the database. So let's add some data to it. I'm going to head over to football-data.co.uk. It's a great resource for football match results, other statistics and betting data. I'm going to copy the link for the data from the 21-22 season in the English Premier League. It's a CSV file. I'm going to read that into a new object called EPL underscore 2122 using the read underscore CSV function from the read R package. I'll just paste in the URL and run it. If you open that up in the viewer, you will see each row is a match and each column has different information like the date and time, the teams involved, the scores, plus loads more. There's a key to the data available on their website. I'm going to create a table in the database and add this to it. I'll use the DB write table function. The first argument I supply is the connection to the database, con. The next one, name, is the name of the table. Call it what you want, I'll call it EPL. 
When I originally wrote the code for this tutorial, I called it England underscore Premier underscore League, but I'm feeling lazy. The next argument I supply, value, is the 21-22 data we just downloaded. If we run that and rerun the DB list tables function, you'll see there's now a table. To check the variables, columns, fields, whatever you want to call them on a database, we could use DB list fields from DBI. Supply the connection and the table name and run it and you will see all the columns in the table. Let's do the same thing again, but this time we'll grab some data from La Liga in Spain. I'll speed it up a bit, but the process is almost the same. I'll call the data frame LL underscore 2122. You can see it's almost exactly the same layout, just Spanish matches. I'll add that into a different table called LL. If we run the DB list tables function now, you will see the two tables. The final piece of data I'm going to grab is from the English Premier League again. But this time I'm going to grab the data from the previous year, 2020-21. And this time I'm not going to create a new table. I'm going to update the EPL table by appending this new data to it. The key difference this time is we need to pass true to the append argument. So this will just add on this data set to the bottom of the database. Now, this is all quite trivial, but you can imagine you could construct much larger databases and code some robust pipelines to update your data sets. Your tables could grow in size and you could update them with new data quite easily. So we've got some tables, let's query them. One way of writing a query is to write some SQL as a string. If you don't know SQL, the SELECT command specifies the columns we want to extract. Separate them with a comma. And the FROM command means we will extract them from the EPL table. You could write it all in one line, but typically when writing SQL we would arrange our code line by line. To query the database we'll use the DB get query function. Add the connection and queries as arguments. If we run that and look into the environment pane, you will see it's returned a data frame with 760 observations and 5 variables. This is exactly what we were expecting. Each season had 380 matches, and we had 2 seasons worth in there, and we asked for 5 columns in the query. We can easily add filters to our queries with the WHERE command. I'll just copy the original query. So the filter I will apply is return only games where the total number of goals is greater than 2.5. The FTHG variable has full-time home goals, while FTAG has full-time away goals. The sum of these two gives you the total goals scored in the match. Predicting if a match will have over or under 2.5 goals is a common betting market. So I'll run that. You can see that 395 matches had more than 2.5 goals, so a bit over half. One thing to highlight at this point is that the whole dataset wasn't loaded into memory and queried like what would have happened if you just loaded it into a data frame or tibble and started wrangling. The dataset was queried before the subsequent, smaller dataset was loaded into memory, and if you have a big dataset, this is crucial. This approach relies on you knowing SQL though, and you might not. But there is a way you can do all your manipulation using dplyr. We need to load another package, which I forgot to do at the start, dbplyr, which enables this. If you don't have this, you can download using install.packages. So I'll create a new object, and this time I'll lay it out using pipes.
The first function I will use is TBL, and I'm going to supply con in the table name as arguments. Then after that in our pipe, we can just use dply our verbs. So I'll select the same columns as my last two queries. If we want to filter, we can use the filter function instead of the where part of the SQL query. Let's run that and have a look at the object. If I print it to the console, you will see it looks quite familiar, but there are some differences to how a normal data frame or table looks. That's because it isn't. The reason is to do with the querying happening outside of R. It doesn't actually all get processed and read into memory as a data frame until we add a final function to the pipeline, the collect function. So run that. The query we wrote here using dplyr actually returns the exact same data as the previous query using SQL. We can check that using the identical function. I just need to convert football underscore data to to a table from a data frame. The final thing we should do when finishing up working with a database is close the connection using db disconnect. So anyway, hope you found that useful and that helps you get started using SQLite with R. And hopefully it wasn't as scary as you might have thought at first. There's loads more to learn to be fair and maybe I'll dive into that another day. If you found that helpful, like and subscribe to the channel. I also post weekly R data and coding threads on my Twitter at Neil G. Curry and my website is torchdata.io. Thanks for watching and happy coding.